Hi, everybody. My name is Marissa Pazant, and I'm the English Language Arts Specialist for the Nebraska Department of Education. Uh, here today to provide uh, an overview of our uh, session two. Um, this is the second in a series of four modules designed to get educators oriented to our uh, 2021 revised college and career ready standards for English language arts. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity yet, um, you'll want to watch um, a couple uh, recordings that come before session two. Um, if you go to the main NDE webpage where you found this resource, you'll also see a recording for an overview of the standards revision process, and then you'll see a recording for session one. Um, these do go in order and kind of build on one another, so just make sure that you've um, had access to the first uh, the first session, or maybe you've done that in person, for example, at an ESU. So I'm going to keep rolling forward here. Um, as a reminder, we have some goals for this rollout. Um, one is to articulate a shared vision of what excellent literacy instruction looks like for all Nebraska students. Um, we also want participants to be able to describe the major standards revision and um, how those uh, shifts and revisions reflect back on the instructional vision. And then we wanna be ready to marshal resources um, to support implementation of the standards and making sure that we can bring that um, instructional vision to life. Here is uh, kind of where we're at in terms of the sequence. So session one, as I mentioned, it's, uh, recording is up on the web page if you didn't see that in person. Um, goes over the standards in instruction. There's some fun videos with that one. And we're here today for session two, which is gonna talk about the four instructional shifts associated with these revised standards. Um, session three, um, we'll talk about uh, the standards and materials. And then session four is gonna help kind of launch you into that next academic year where, um, uh, schools will be in the initial implementation stage. So that's our sequence. Um, we do have kind of a statewide vision. Um, this is part of that vision. Um, we want students to have regular practice with complex texts in their academic language. So we want an abundance of, of reading, um, writing about content. Um, we want kids to have access to a lot of different kinds of texts. Um, diverse sets of texts, complex and, and rich texts, informational, lit literary. We just want to see students engage with a lot of different types of reading. We want that reading, writing, and speaking um, to be grounded in evidence from different kinds of texts. We want students to build knowledge with those texts. And then for our um, emergent readers, we want to make sure that they have um, instruction that is systematic, um, explicit and um, based on those uh, foundational literacy skills that we know are so important. Okay, so session one, um, uh, everybody got to watch uh, a little footage of, from four different classrooms um, and uh, there was some reflection to do on what folks saw in terms of the instructional vision, how that plays out um, in these different exemplars of li excellent literacy instruction. We talked a little bit about the roles that standards play in our vision for excellent and equitable ELA instruction. That was all part of session one. Um, so today um, I've given a, a little bit of welcome and, and a little bit of uh, background context here. Now we're gonna talk about um, the shifts in the standards. Um, and then uh, what's expected um, in terms of uh, shifting our instruction to help students meet these, meet these standards. So that's the agenda for today. Um, just as a reminder, we are framing this in some uh, kind of uh, theoretical, uh, uh, theoretic, a theoretical framework. Um, this is Elmore's instructional core. And it basically says that um, there's kind of three integral parts of our system and our learning experiences. It involves the student, the teacher, 
um, the content that they're engaged in mutually, and then sort of this task. The idea here is that if um, one of these kind of big components or elements of the system changes, it requires the other to the others to shift as well. So for example, if we're upping the rigor of our content in terms of grade level um, text, then that's going to require something from us instructionally and it's going to place additional challenge on our students. So think of this as kind of a three legged stool and that all three of those legs have to be in balance um, in order for there to be effective teaching and learning. Okay, so our first um, shift that is outlined in that shifts document from the previous slide, and feel free to pause if you need to go back and um, look at that more closely or access it from the website, but our first shift how, in the revised standards has to do with foundations um, of reading and the science of reading. Um, the writing team who uh, pieced these together um, really looked at specificity and what um, research has had to say about, you know, the sequence of um, uh, phonological awareness skills, for an example here. Um, and uh, you'll notice that there's there are more indicators um, between 2014 and 21. Um, they're more uh, a little bit more specific um, and that is why we've specifically called that out as a shift because um, there's just more specificity and detail associated with some of these foundational skills. Okay, another example with uh, word analysis between 14 and 21. Again, you can see there are more indicators. Um, they're, they're more detailed. Um, they just uh, are a little bit more explicit in terms of guiding instruction and what we want students to be able to master. Okay, so these next few slides are just going to have um, a, a quote um, that's uh, complementary to um, the ideas behind that, uh, that shift. So here we have a quote from uh, Shim, Tim Shanahan, and there's a little, um, uh, a highly recommended reading underneath that, um, the a report from the National Reading Panel. It's a little bit dated, but not a lot of that information um, has changed. So if you'd like, you can pause your screen here and just kind of read and reflect on that quote. If you have been a part of these sessions that are um, live and in person, um, we do have a discussion activity kind of built in here. Um, and it's asking about the shift having to do with the science of reading and our reading foundations. What aspect of implementing the shift do you think will be most difficult in your context? And then what will help you and others meet that challenge? This is an invitation for you um, to have those conversations either at the district level or at the school level. Um, for, for example, do you have the materials um, that are, that are going to help you um, provide that systematic, explicit um, phonics experience for students? Um, if not, what steps need to be taken? Or uh, do you have um, appropriate um, identification uh, systems in place? So if a student is struggling a little bit, is there an appropriate intervention or even a way to identify that student? So this sort of discuss discussion question is just going to help you think a little bit through um, what am I going to need to do to address that shift? Okay, shift number two. Um, I'm calling the staircase of complexity. Um, so for the first time, uh, our revised standards um, have specific information about where we want students to be reading by the end of a grade level. So for example, there you'll see um, for grade four on the 21 side, uh, students will read and comprehend a wide range of informational texts of appropriate complexity for grade four independently and proficiently. So we really want to think about um, how text complexity builds within a grade and how it builds out across K-12. Um, so our revised standards do have that um, clear expectation with text complexity. Okay, another quote here to pause and consider. 
Hey, same question as, as the first shift. What aspect of implementing this shift, being the staircase of complexity, do you think will be most difficult in your context? What will help you and others meet that challenge? Again, these are school and sometimes district conversations um, really coming together and um, saying, okay, we have um, raised the bar in terms of the complexity of text that we want students to be proficient with. Um, what's going to be challenging about that and how can we uh, meet that challenge? And shift three has to do with the balance between literary and informational text types. Um, so in 2014, um, and please, if you need to uh, kind of pause here and, and take a look at this in, in more detail, um, all of our reading comprehension standards were kind of grouped together. One of the biggest changes you'll see with the revised standards is that we have standards for reading informational text or RI over on that right hand side and then uh, for reading prose and poetry. So that's any kind of um, narrative or creative sorts of text poems uh, kind of encompasses that category. So uh, we really want to think about um, making sure that students have equal access to informational text types and they're not just reading fiction all the time. Um, we know that that background uh, knowledge building is um, the informational texts are really critical to supporting that. Okay, another quote here and another uh, great resource at the bottom, content area and disciplinary literacy strategies and frameworks. Um, re pause here to read that quote. And then if you're wanting to read a little bit more, um, there's an International Liter Literacy Association source there. Okay, again, Another discussion question. So if we're thinking about how we're going to bring some balance um, uh, to the types of texts that we have students read, what might be challenging about that and how are we gonna meet that challenge? Um, one example is um, perhaps students in high school, um, maybe a lot of their courses are based around uh, reading novels and um, novel units. We'll really want to think about how can we complement that sort of literary fiction uh, with some informational texts and um, what is happening outside of the ELA classroom. Are students getting sufficient practice with complex texts in different subject areas? Okay, and then our last and final shift has to do with explicit writing instruction. Um, over here on the 2014 side, you'll see that we had one standard that kind of address, or one indicator rather, um, that addressed uh, kind of the uh, grammar usage mechanic side of things. Um, so um, the example on the left just demonstrates that that indicator was is pretty much the same all the way across. So whether you're talking about third grade or seventh grade or the 11, 12 grade band, um, it just says for students to proofread and edit writing recursively for format and conventions of standard English. So what we've really done with the revised standards is kind of tease that apart um, and be really specific about which um, grammar usage mechanics pieces um, are going to best serve students developmentally. Um, at, so you'll see that example uh, for third grade, they're capitalizing those particular proper nouns and proper adjectives and learning to use commas in a certain way. So there's just more of an articulate sequence. Okay, another quote here, and then a highly recommended resource underneath there, Hockman and Wexler's text, one sentence at a time, the need for explicit instruction in teaching students to write well. Um, I also recommend The Writing Revolution by the same authors um, that's uh, gaining popularity very quickly um, at the time, as of the time of this recording, which is uh, winter of 2022. Um, a lot of uh, districts and schools have been engaging with Hockman and Wexler's um, Writing Revolution. So if that's a resource um, you would like more information about, please feel free to reach out. And now we're going to talk about, so we have the shifts in the standards, which were described in the previous slides. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper into um, how that impacts our instruction or should impact our instruction. 
thinking about that three-legged stool, that Elmore's core, um, that changes in the in the system uh, require uh, changes in all parts. Okay, so um, I'm going to give a little uh, direction here, and then uh, encourage you to pause the recording and uh, use your reflection uh, your reflection sheet. Um, one of the things that we do when uh, this session is in person is everybody looks, has a little experiential with text. So in this case, we've got a little um, sentence from the tale of Peter Rabbit. Um, so you're going to read that to yourself, and then you're going to run through uh, these, these, these bullet points. So what does this sentence mean? So um, what's going on here <laughs> in essence? What, what's going on at this point of the story? What's, um, what are the characters doing? Just what's the meaning behind this sentence? And then we kind of shift into um, things we notice about the sentence, like language things that we might notice, like um, uh, there's a quotation, a direct quote, um, who's talking. Um, there's some different types of punctuation. There's some different vocabulary in here that if you were teaching students might not be familiar to them. Um, what does what you notice help you to understand it? Um, and, and then how does it contribute to the text meaning or impact? That kind of goes back to the same question. And then uh, we would invite participants to write a sentence that uses language similarly in some way. So maybe I'd have per participants write um, an interaction between two characters that contains a quotation, for example. So I would encourage you to just kind of pause your screen here and use your reflection guide to respond to some of these questions. And then when you, uh, when you come back, um, there could be a discussion of, um, if you're with other people watching this, just a discussion about some of your responses here. And then we have another uh, text experiential with a higher level text. This comes from Macbeth. So again, you would be reading um, the lines of this poem. It is iambic pentameter, uh, by the way, if you need to refresh yourself on that term. Um, this is a little excerpt from Shakespeare's Macbeth. You would run through the same paces down here. What's the meaning behind this sentence? What linguistic features are you noticing? How does that help you understand it? How does it contribute to the text meaning or impact? And again, recognizing that all of these um, bulleted questions here are aligned to what we want students to be able to do with text. Um, and so these are little um, standard, standards aligned, but text dependent questions based on Shakespeare's Macbeth. And then again, having students practice um, that particular mode of writing with a sentence um, that uses language similarly in some way. Okay, so um, for this uh, next part of the presentation, um, this is where you are going to want to pause the recording and really dig into some of the materials that are that go along with this session. All of these are going to be found underneath this recording, same place you went to access this recording for session two. It's asking you to um, select a guidebook sample. This is a, um, a high quality instructional material and it's um it's a little piece of um maybe a larger unit that has some student tasks and activities um and it, it's going to ask you to reflect on how that um is going to move students toward more like explicit or uh, teachers i should say how it's encouraging us to have more um explicit writing instruction in our in our classrooms. And then a couple other questions there. How does it reflect the other 21 shifts? How does it reflect our vision for excellent and equitable ELA instruction? And then um, asking you to think about to what extent do your local instructional materials support this type of inter integration? So please um, pause the recording, dig into those samples. I think you'll be delighted by what you see there. It's um, they're really a great set of resources. 
Okay, and then our last little section uh, for today is to um, just talk briefly about implementing the shifts. Uh, some key takeaways. Again, you'll see the <clears throat> listing of the four shifts here, these first four items. Uh, foundations of reading standards are more grounded in the science of reading. We have a clearly defined staircase of complexity at each grade level. Um, we've emphasized the balance between literary and informational text types, and the standards now um, cover aspects of explicit writing instruction, um, both at the sentence and paragraph levels. Um, that second bullet point, implementing the shifts, means going beyond their what to the why and how of strengthening the instructional core. And like the individual standards, the shifts work together to support Nebraska's vision of excellent and equitable ELA instruction for all students. So those are our takeaways from this particular session. Another discussion, if you're watching this presentation either by yourself or if you're gonna collaborate with colleagues afterwards, um, just asking you to explore um, what aspect of um, the standards exploration might bring, bring you a little bit of challenge? And then how can you and your colleagues overcome that challenge? So again, this is just inviting you to have a wider conversation about the instructional shifts, um, for example, explicit writing instruction, and then um, how are you going to assure that students are um, able to meet the, the revised standards? Hey, and I'm going to stop there. I want to thank everybody for joining. Um, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions or if you um, would like some in-person support. My email address is marissa.pazant at nebraska.gov. Thank you for being here.